Welcome to News Today. I'm Shiv Arur. It's the big story of the day that we're putting in the spotlight this evening. In a big move, Prime Minister Modi's government has decided to start sustained dialogue in Kashmir. The centre has appointed an interlocutor who will have talks with all stakeholders, which means it could include the Valley's terror hawks as well. The Huriyat who are currently under investigation by the government's own National Investigation Agency. So is this really progress or is this a big U-turn by the Modi Sarkar? Here's our special report. Yeh Sarkar ne faisla kiya hai ki Jambu aur Kaspir mein ek sustained dialogue prarambh kiya jaye. The Narendra Modi government announcing a new dialogue initiative to resolve Kashmir. But more than what Home Minister Rajnath Singh said, the news lies in what he left unsaid. Will the centre open talks with the Hurriyat Conference? Sri Dineshwar Sarma, Jambu Kashmir ke elected representatives, political parties, different organisations, or vyaktiyon ke saath baat chit praram karenge. And when pressed by the media to come clean, Rajnath chose to leave the ball in the newly appointed interlocutor Dineshwar Sharma's court. Sustained interaction or dialogue ke madhyam se unki legitimate aspirations ko samjhenge. Rajnath Singh cleverly dodged a bullet there. But what is significant is he doesn't rule out talks with the Huriyat. This is stark contrast with the BJP's stand which is totally against engaging separatists. Dineshwar Sharma, the interlocutor, is an old Kashmiri hand and was in the valley during the height of militancy in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, this is a good time to start talks and, mm. uh, and uh, I hope that uh, people of Kashmir will cooperate and uh, help in bringing peace in. Government of India's decision to appoint a new interlocutor for dialogue in Kashmir has received a mixed response. While most mainstream political parties have uh, welcomed the move, in fact, the Chief Minister Mahabubha Mufti herself came out and welcomed in, uh, and also invited other stakeholders to be part of this dialogue. This is a start and it's a good start and this is a it's a necessity of the time which we have, which is supposed to be there. Or I am I once again, you know, welcome uh, the Honourable uh, Home Minister's initiative. I am glad that instead of sending guns and pellets to Kashmir, mm -hmm. Rajnath Singh is sending an interlocutor. Right. That's certainly an admission of how wrong their policies have been. Pakistan dismissed the government's offer for talks with Kashmiri politicians. The announcement of talks comes just ahead of U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson's visit to India, sparking speculation if the initiative is linked to American pressure. It also raises the question, is the government now looking for a political resolution as demanded by its ally in Srinagar, Mehbooba Mufti? If so, what happens to terror funds investigations against Hurriyat leaders? With Shuja ul -Haq and Rahul Srivastava, Bureau Report, India Today. Many big questions thrown up by this big decision by the Modi government. Well, chief among them, is the Modi government starting dialogue with groups that include the Hurriyat? Is the Hurriyat going to be at the other end of the table when this conversation actually begins? What happens to the terror funds probe against Hurriyat leaders? Or is there going to be some kind of a discrimination? Is the Modi government looking for a political solution to Kashmir. Is this yet another BJP flip-flop on Kashmir, an admission that what has happened in the last three years has actually not worked out? Is the Modi government's decision linked to the US Secretary of State Tillerson's impending visit to the country over the next few days? Joining us on the big debate this evening, we have with us engineer Rashid, an independent MLA from Jammu and Kashmir, Narendra Taneja, national spokesperson of the BJP, and Ajoy Kumar, spokesperson of the Congress Party. Narendra Taneja, I want to begin with you because over the, over the last few hours since the announcement came from uh, the Union Home Minister, the question has been very specific. Does this outreach, does this interlocutor this reaching out for the legitimate aspirations, this conversation that is going to be happening, 
does it or does it not include the Hurriyat or is there a discrimination even within the Hurriyat? What's going on? Can you clarify that for us, sir? I, I think, I think uh, let's not jump the gun. You know, the mandate to the representative is very clear, which has been very categorically outlined by the Honorable Home Minister. Uh, is the representative, he's going to look at the ground, you know, start, uh, you know, his own work, do his own assessment, go for his own research, go for his own interactions, interviews, meet people and all that. And then he has been given full freedom. He's going to basically, you know, chalk his own course. Mm. Uh, that's what it is. So let's not jump the gun who is going to talk with and so on and so forth. This is what it is today. You see, he's a very experienced hand. He knows Kashmir very well. He knows uh, realities on the ground and he probably also knows a lot of individuals and political parties on the ground down there. No, but so that's the way to work. You you're saying I'm jumping the gun, but you know, India today has done if we just, groundbreaking reports this year. Uh, you know, uh, you've spoken on some of those as well, Mr. Taneja, where we've exposed terror links by the Hurriyat. Uh, you know, uh, people people uh, uh, as far up as Gilani have links directly with yeah. terror. His proxies, his assistants have talked about, you know, direct communications between people like Gilani and terror groups across the line of control. So is that going to be a, a big heartedness by the BJP for these people? I mean, when but you send BJP, your interlocutor there, are you going to say, don't jump the no, gun, talk no, to all no, these no. guys? I mean, we've see, established we, we, terror links. No. Well, first of all, we are using the word representative, so I'll, uh, let's stick to the word representative. He is the representative. Number, uh, number two is, so BJP is very clear on one thing. When it comes to the people who don't, let's say, believe in the constitution of India, don't have faith in the constitution of India, have got basically idea or ideologies which are in conflict with the constitution of India, or our idea, this thing that... Pakistan no, but why are you watering Kashmir it down, Narendra Taneja? You're talking about the constitution. These are not people. The forget about people the constitution. For. This is not even about no, the constitution. Not. These are people who have had a direct hand in the killing of Indian citizens. I mean, you're watering it down by saying people who don't believe in the constitution. Forget about the constitution for a moment. These people are murderers. You see, you are right, but that's what, that's precisely what I've said. We have seen history in Punjab, we have seen history in Northeast, we have seen history in some other geographies in different parts of the world. What exactly we want? Our focus is to secure peace, growth and stability in Jammu and Kashmir. That's the agenda. And here we have got an extremely ex experienced person who is, who is given the rank of a cabinet secretary so you can understand the kind of power he's going to enjoy. And he's going to, you know, uh, go about the whole thing okay. in the most okay. scientific way at the same time in a way which basically can help us bring peace and stability. Okay. Let's not jump. Ajay Kumar, Let you know, this is a familiar, this is a familiar move. Uh, you know, interlocutors, go. representatives, whatever you want to call it, it has happened mm -hmm. before as well. How, are, how is the Congress party reading this move? Are, 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 you, uh, are, you, are you cynical about it because it has never worked in the past? Or are you going to simply say that this is an admission by the Modi government that what they've tried in Kashmir over the last two and a half, three years has simply not worked out and therefore they're trying something new? No, Shiv, first of all, I want to tell Mr. Taneja that, uh, you know, uh, may not be Mr. Taneja personally, but all their spokesperson, whenever there was a discussion on dialogue in Kashmir, and even some anchors would say it is anti-national, and especially the BJP spokesperson, and every time anybody... This is true, this is true, past yes. past three years we have heard them making the moment you say Kashmir, you need, you need to speak to the people of Kashmir, anybody who mentioned it was anti-national. Now you tell me, first of all, aren't they the most anti-national party today? Because let us understand what was it that we were saying in three years which was anti-national and suddenly Bharatiya Janta Party, when they said it has become a, <clears throat> a nationalist development, Kashmir should be considered. Hmm. So no, the no, fair point. hypocrisy of the Bharatiya Janta Party is what why we want to you know, highlight. That they, you know, Chef, they kept telling everyone, whether even Yashwan Sinha was a turncoat, he was anti-national, forget others. Sitaram Yachuri, everybody was anti-national and today Mr. Taneja should explain that what is so nationalistic about the BJP 
except for calling every Indian anti-national, every Kashmiri anti-national. No, this is true. I, you know, Nare, before no, before I go to Rashid Enjigar, oh, you must answer that, Narendra Taneja. We don't it's know. Not, it's Mr. not a personal Sharma comment, but Ajay Kumar so, says the BJP has routinely attacked people for having any kind of parley with the, the Huriyat in the past. You have NIA investigations against many of those people. It's true. I have anchored debates where the BJP has roundly criticized people for wanting to reach out to the, to the Huriyat or have anything to do with them. So what is this about? Isn't this blatant hypocrisy? It's a fair question. No, no, but it's very clear. You see, people who don't believe in the constitution, they are anti-national. It's as simple as that. There is no, no, we haven't changed the stand at all. All we have done is appointed no, a representative. No, but we already know that these people don't the believe in the constitution, Mr. Taneja. So are you categorically saying that you won't speak to that? We already know that the Gilanis and Mirwaisers don't believe in the constitution. We already know no, that. That's a given. That's like, uh, no, but that's precise. No, no, that's precisely I said. Look, the Prime Minister made it very clear on the 15th of August in his speech that no, you, you know, na gali se baat banegi, na bandhu ki goli se banegi, mohabbat se baat banegi. That's the Prime Minister says around you know, the address to the nation on the 15th. And secondly, our strategy has been very clear. First, we, you know, we launched surgical strike against Pakistan as part of the whole whole strategy. Second was to eliminate terrorists as many as we can. It third doesn't add up. To have dialogue. I know, it doesn't now we add up. to the third stage. It has not happened overnight. No, no, because on the one hand, very, because very on the one hand, strategy. there is this idea of a having a no-nonsense approach, uh, you know, an uncompromising approach as far as Kashmir is concerned, and yet this big-heartedness. I mean, uh, it, 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 it's sounding confused to the people. I'll be honest with you. It's sounding confused because no, 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 it's the I, same. I, it's no I can. Nonsense. I can, no, I can no, tell no, you personally, no, no. I can no tell you personally, nonsense. we've been you covering are, the Huriyat very no carefully and we can tell you that it sounds suspicious when you, when you appear to give this kind of escape route to the Huriyat and you talk about the constitution when they're actually people who've been caught on camera saying we were complicit in burning schools and killing people. These are people who are being investigated by your government right now. That's why it's sounding suspicious when you only talk about the constitution. Okay, I want to bring in Rashid Engineer these, also these in on this. Rashid Engineer, how do you, you know, how do you You're see this? On Rashid Engineer, These surely peace is, surely peace is something that you must be looking at and wanting for yeah, Kashmir. Yeah. But how do you see this? I mean, you have seen this over many years, Rashid Ji. You've seen interlocutors, representatives come in there. What is your honest, candid view of what has been no, announced? Definitely. Today? Sir, first let me first let me first let me humbly request my Congress spokesman that if he is opposing the stand taken by BJP as on date, let Congress spokesman tell the nation, tell the people of Jammu and Kashmir what they did for 70 years with the Kashmir issue. Hmm. It is only a legacy and a history of broken promises which Fair Congress question. government made Fair from question. time to time. And we, the people of Kashmir, see it with, um, with, with, see it with respect. See, we, we definitely wish peace. We wish that there should be unconditional talks between all stakeholders so that peace returns to the valley and issues are resolved amicably. But all what we want from the union government is that they should definitely give some uh, free hand to the interlocutor. And it is a good thing that if they have given him the rank of a cabinet secretary, and rather than being in now the blame game that Huriyat has done this, they have done that, mm. they have not talked to them in the past, let us see for a good future so that issues are resolved, the issue of Jammu Kashmir is resolved and all the stakeholders are taken on board and I will appeal Congress spokesman and Congress party through your channel that, and also the media of India that for God's sake don't sabotage this move because we the people of Kashmir are suffering, we are dying, we want an end to bloodshed. Okay, but not okay. I don't expect you, right. I don't expect you to put a spotlight, any kind of harsh spotlight on the, the on the, on the Huriyat, no matter what they've actually done, Rashid Engineer. But you know, no, but Ajay Kumar, that's a, that's a, that's a very important question. Question. The, you know, the, the, the accusation is that the Congress is showing bad faith right now. And while I support you on the fact that the BJP has called you anti-national in the past for talking to the Huriyat, you're basically blaming the BJP and pointing a finger at them for doing what you guys have done in the past as well. And r respond to what Rashid the engineer says. What you have not achieved in 70 years, perhaps the BJP is trying to do something new. So that no, the first question is... Uh, Mr. Engineer, I want to make it very clear that the Congress party, whether it was from 2004 to 2014, irrespective when you look at record, Kashmir had the maximum amount of peace. Now, whether that peace is the ideal peace or not, that's a different, uh, it's debatable. Second issue was we were talking about how the BJP was painting black every people and every organization who said there should be a dialogue. 
we have always said that there has to be a political solution to the Kashmir issue. My question was that the Bhartiya Janta Party, because it favors them for elections, whether it's Uttar Pradesh and they make the bombastic allegations against anybody who thinks about India, actually the most anti-national perspective is that because every other political party has been saying that Kashmir needs a political dialogue. Kashmir needs a healing hand. No, sir, then and, this is... and I totally disagree with Mr. Engineer might have a perspective which may be totally off. Sir, the the sir, Congress, sir. but no, let me complete ship. I'm just saying very clear. We have always said that there needs... One sec, one sec. Uh, they, we have always said that the Kashmir issue has to have a political solution. We have always said that you cannot succumb to the terrorist activity. So those are things which we still firmly Rashid believe Engineer in. There respond. has to be a political solution. You cannot, you know, bend your knees in terms of terrorist activity. Sir. And we want the government to succeed on the interlock. I mean, if Kashmir, Sir, once again, if good, this dialogue brings about a peace in Kashmir, so be it, and we'll be very happy to support the government. The, during majority of the period. No. Yes, Mr. yes. Kumar, tell me one thing. What you did from Sir, 1947, the problem in after going to the United Nations, late, late then 90s, you made nah. promises in Shumla, then in Tashkent, then Manmohan Singh ji made promises, then Darshima Rao said, sky is the limit. But you did nothing, sir, I am sorry to say. On ground, you did nothing except making no, all the uh, promises. Tell me something. Tell me something. Rashid Engineer, I have a question for you. Rashid Engineer, is the BJP right? But you have done nothing on the ground. Rashid Engineer. supporting BJP. Rashid Engineer. I am yeah. telling you simply that no, for God's sake, if BJP wants to do sir. something, let you give your support to them. Okay, so Rashid Engineer, are you, you saying, are you saying that sir. nobody should jump the gun? Are you saying the BJP okay. is right ship, ship. when it says that people should not jump the gun? Rashid Engineer, are you saying people should not jump the gun and you, we should give this a chance? Absolutely. Sir. Sir, absolutely, because people of Kashmir need dialogue. We are dying, we are suffering in this last 70 years. If BJP wants to take a bold initiative, we will definitely support them. But they should address the sentiments, aspirations and the historic perspective of the issue. We are there to support them, whether it is Congress, BJP or even Shiv Sena tomorrow there. And they sincerely want Kashmir issue to get resolved. You know, Narendra, we will definitely okay. support any quick, such quick movement. Response which from Ajay, to uh, Ajay Kumar, then I have to go back to Narendra Taneja. Ajay Kumar, quick response. Yeah, Shiv, the, the, the question again is, Mr. Rashid Engineer should be very, very clear that the, con the, the problem is it has to be within the boundaries of the Indian constitution. It has to be within the boundaries of the integrity and sovereignty yes. of this nation. Now, if those are, you know, open dialogues, obviously you'll run into stuff. So we are very clear. If the government wants to go ahead, and again, let the BJP understand, and I what hope they are very done, clear. Why have you eroded the economy, India sir? It is New Delhi which has eroded the constitutional issues of the, of the constitutional issues of the nation is okay, uncompromising. You know, this, this, this actually, this actually then brings me to a point. To My sir, it has what to is be under. agreement? What is Tashkent agreement? What I, are you and I, Okay, you have made that point, Rashid Engineer. Let me make, let me, let me bring Narendra Taneja back. He's been listening patiently. Let me bring him back in on this. The question, Mr. Taneja, is the question is because you know because because for a spectator, it appears like the BJP is going in saying no rules. We're going to go in. We're going to you know we're going to play it by ear. We're going to see how it goes. We're going to talk to everybody. But you know some some. Parts of this, everybody are people who you've had very hard positions on in the recent past, including people in the Horiath, people in you know who have direct links with terror groups. So my question is separate. My question is, is this in some way, Mr. Taneja, some kind of an admission by the BJP that what the Modi government has done as far as Kashmir is concerned since 2014 hasn't worked out and therefore the need to employ this new move? On the contrary, everything is going as per our plan. Every single mile has been going as our plan. You know, uh, and surgical strikes, eliminating terrorists, and at the same time, Mr. Rajnath uh, traveling to Kashmir two, three times in the past, saying, my doors are open. Don't forget that. Don't forget. Just uh, dig out your archives and you'll see that. Mr. Ram Rajnath has said in Kashmir, my doors are open. I'm in the guest house. Mm. Come. Anybody can come and talk. So, and now with the, you know, address to the nation by the Prime Minister is part of it. This is what I'm saying is part of a very well meditated strategy. Let's not forget one thing. Here we are talking of Kashmiris. We are talking of our people. We are not talking of people living in some distant geography. There are people, our children, 
their aspirations are our aspirations okay and if at times it happens because of the way it has been kind of mishandled uh, I, I don't want to play congress bjp politics here but everybody knows the history now we are trying to find a sustainable solution and mr sharma has been not only fully empowered you know but mr taneja the there are, there, are there any red lines apart the from the time, constitution the, is very clear. the people of the india also is, want to know uh, you know the people of jammu and kashmir are our brothers and sisters their fellow citizens they are fellow indians uh, my question is people are wondering whether there are any red lines that could easily derail this new move by the bjp what are those red lines don't say constitution constitution everybody knows many of the people who you perhaps are going to be speaking to don't believe in the indian constitution so who are you going to really be speaking with Uh, well, we you see that we have seen in the past in Punjab there are many people they were burning the copy of the constitution not on Indian soil even on foreign soil and now today they are sitting in Parliament the member of Parliament I can share names with you so I mean if the people there who've been saying what they've been okay, saying okay so you have a broader you have a broader vision you're say, saying look okay we want to run for election okay. we want to be Lok Sabha you know so but uh, but just a second just a second but let me clarify let me clarify one thing Mr Sharma he is going to go there. you know listen very carefully what the people uh, want and have discussions dialogues with various section of the society and then basically he is free to talk his own this, you know uh, uh, his forgive own me forgive me sir but this doesn't sound like something new this sounds like something that's been done government. before so I, what is new is, about this the so rashid engineer answer that no, question no. what is new about this process yeah, i mean wh what about this is, process you know somebody going in there with an open mind speaking to all sides what is new about this rashid engineer how you know why are you optimistic this time rashid engineer yes, you are yes, yes 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 absolutely you are sir you are right you are right you are right in the past dialogue has dialogue has yielded nothing but it doesn't mean that we should stop talking kashmiris will put forward their view point whether somewhat autonomy mm. somewhat right to self determination somewhat self rule and let mr sharma put forward view point of india whose view point is stronger whose view point carries a logic and argument i think there should be a common meeting ground where all the three stakeholders can be taken on board because you can't quarrel all the way we have already quarreled for 70 years pakistan and india have fought three wars over kashmir kashmir is a lost one lakh lives everybody's life has turned to be a hell let us not this uh, let us not uh, draw a solution from tv studios okay. but once mr sharma or somebody else is here let us discuss things on merits historic perspective sacrifices legalities Ajay Kumar. everything will be decided okay. on table okay. i understood think. got your point let us leave okay. it to the interlock you sound optimistic you sound optimistic i tend to be a little cynical but ajay kumar you know i, I agree with many of the things you said today and I, i actually agree with many of the things everybody has said today ajay kumar you know at this point given that this interlocutor business this representative business is something that has been done before by the congress without getting into the politics of it without getting into the tutu meme of it given that the larger broader vision is i guess something we can all agree we all want peace a resolution a solution to the entire kashmir issue is there is there a chance that politics will not derail this particular attempt for peace look uh, shiv uh, one thing mr engineer uh, said interestingly was three stakeholders i thought there were only two stakeholders the government of india and the people of kashmir hmm. now they need to so my fear again is coming back to the th the third <laughs> stakeholders if it is somebody from across the border then then this government has to clarify the stand to the people of india sure and uh, and they have to be and that is what i'm saying the dialogue can happen the dialogue should happen Sir, all the aspirations and issues of the uh, people of kashmir who are under great deal of uh, you know of they can let your jugular man So no, there are absolutely. automatically Sir, three stakeholders. So start with let us start talking between Kashmiris and no, no. New Delhi, and then we can. We have to talk to Pakistan at the end of the day. Government of India, people of Kashmir, and who is the third? Sir. If the third is. Okay. Pakistan, Why should you take the, that is where the issue is. India. No, no, that's right, because, that's right, that's, 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 that's a fair point. Nobody, nobody wants the, nobody you can't wants, that, nobody sir. wants the, to the people of Jammu and Kashmir and India for the resolution also. Absolutely. There okay. are 22 seats, second in the assembly. I think the, what the BJP is, and I want, I want to ask an agreement with Pakistan. Okay, okay, that's it. Gentlemen, we're completely out of time. I think what the BJP has done, in the final analysis, at least for now, the BJP appears to have kept things a little ambiguous, a little open, because they are aware of the... pitfalls that have happened in the past with closed doors etc we can have grave problems with those open doors to people who have killed our fellow citizens in kashmir those questions will continue to be asked by us here on india today because
people have died as a result of the terror links of some of those agencies but we have which these interlocutors and these also. representatives Where are, you are about perhaps our own going only. to be talking to Did our Rashid Engineer that's picnic Rashid Engineer no no that's that your view on that is is respected i understand it absolutely i respect you as a voice from kashmir that's why we've invited you on this show but we're going to continue to talk about it and we're going to continue to ask the questions we're not going to simply support a move like this without asking the right questions so i thank all of you for being here and being honorable with your answers here on the news today at 9 thank you very much gentlemen moving on now what is the congress party's strategy in the upcoming elections in gujarat apart from rahul gandhi being the face of the campaign the grand old party is banking on a lesser known triumvirate to dislodge the bjp from its most fortified seat of power we tell you all there is to know about this new trimurti the bjp bastion this time the congress sensing an opportunity the induction of 44 year old popular obc leader alpesh thakur has come as a shot in the arm sadar vikas hua hai to gujarat ke andar 7 lakh se zyada berozgar hai agar vikas hua hai to gujarat ke andar 7 lakh se zyada kisanon pe karza hai kahan vikas hua hai कहीं पे भी विकास नहीं हुआ है और विकास के पागल होने की बात कर रहे हैं आप। Only a few are not aware of 23-year-old Hardik Patel who sought reservation for Patels, a one-time vote bank of the BJP. His secret meeting with Rahul Gandhi on Monday was seen as another boost for the Congress party, even though Patel wasn't ready to embrace the Congress publicly just yet. भरत सिंह सोलंकी जाहरात करी कि मैं त्रय युवा नेताओं ने आमंत्रण आप तो आमंत्रण ने अगर आभार मानी छे परंतु मैं वारंवा कहू कि हार्दिक पटेल कोई पार्टी नो गुलाम नहीं कोई पार्टी में जोड़वा मैं कोई पन सदस्यता ली दीना थी ना मारे कोई पार्टी में जोड़ा ऊपर न थी मारे लोगों ना हितों नहीं बात ना लोगों ना मुद्दा नहीं बात कर रही थे। The last of the three Murti is 36-year-old Jignesh Mevani, a lawyer and Dalit right activist. Mevani shot to prominence in the aftermath of Dalit floggings in Pune last year. Dalits have been traditionally allied to the Congress Party. Their political trajectories oppose the BJP but have little in common. What unites them is the public support they've earned. These three leaders have galvanized the public for their respective causes, but it will be an altogether different ball of game to convert that support into actual votes. So the history is stacked against the Congress party, but as they say, politics is the art of possible. From Ahmedabad with Gopi Maniar, Mayuresh Kanpate for India Today. The BJP suffered something of a setback to its Mission 150 plan for Gujarat after a party that leader accused it of offering about 1 crore rupees in bribes to change sides. While the Saffron party has denied these allegations, the opposition continues to attack it over what is being called the bribe gate controversy. BJP's Mission 150 Plus to retain power in Gujarat has run into trouble with the Saffron Party facing horse trading charges. With the opposition already targeting the ruling party over delay in announcement of the Gujarat poll dates, fresh allegations of bribing a party dar leader have hurt the BJP the most. Days after he joined the BJP, Narendra Patel, a former aide of Hardik Patel, has accused the BJP of offering him rupees one crore to change sides. Soon, another former aide of Hardik Patel announced his resignation from the BJP, accusing it of spending crores to buy the party dars. काफी कन्वीनर से बात की होगी सभी कन्वीनर को पैसा चाहिए वो खरीदना चाहते हैं पार्टी दार समाज को भी पैसे से खरीदना चाहते हैं ऐसा मेरे को लग रहा है। Hardik Patel who has been spearheading the party dar agitation in Gujarat took to Twitter to attack the BJP he said the incident has insulted the Gujarati pride and the community will avenge this humiliation Rahul Gandhi who took on the Modi government at his rally in Gandhinagar also tweeted Congress vice president invoking Gujarati pride saying the people of Gujarat cannot be bought the Congress also got support from other opposition parties on the issue 
Under fire from all corners, Union Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad trashed the opposition charges. Now, the people of Dharendra Patel have come in front of the people. This is the drama of the part. This is one thing that I have been very angry. One crore rupiah has been given to the ghoos. और दस लाख दिखाया जा रहा है तो बाकी नब्बे लाख कहा गए द ब्राइब स्कैंडल कुडेंट हैव कम एट द वर्स्ट टाइम फॉर अ बीजेपी विच इज ऑलरेडी अंडर अटैक बाय हार्दिक पटेल एंड ट्राइंग हार्ड टू कीप इट्स पार्टीदार वोट्स इन टैक्ट इन अ फ्रेश एलिगेशन अगेंस्ट पार्टी टू बाय द पार्टीदार आंदोलन लीडर्स एंड ब्रेक द एजुटेशन कुड फर्दर एलियनेट द कम्युनिटी फ्रॉम बीजेपी ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टूडे Meanwhile, the big political row over actor Vijay's movie Mersal continues to escalate. The actor has been booked for allegedly showing temples and schemes launched by the Modi government in bad light in his movie. Meanwhile, BJP leader H. Raja, who first criticized the movie, then watched a pirated version and also gave a communal spin by releasing documents saying actor Vijay is a Christian, has now been provided security, if you can believe it, in Chennai. Meanwhile, actor Vishal, who slammed BJP leader Raja for watching a pirated version of Mersal, was reportedly raided by the GST intelligence team. However, the director general of GST Chennai has released a statement refuting that it was the GST intelligence that conducted these raids. A seemingly innocent tweet by BJP leader H. Raja. But the intention is clear. The tweet has the voter I card and letterhead of actor Vijay with the caption, Truth is bitter. But what is the truth Raja is highlighting? It's clear the focus is on Vijay's Christian name to underline his religion. The BJP's anger with the Tamil superstar started with his alleged misrepresentation of central schemes like GST and Digital India in his movie, Mersal. But now the controversy has taken on a communal colour as well. With the BJP asking why Vijay's movie asks people to build more hospitals than temples. If he has told whether it is uh, we can build more hospitals than building temple, church, mosque, it's all right. Why singling out Hindus' place of worship alone? But is the party now isolated in its opposition to Mersal? Political parties have united to condemn what they say is the BJP's attempt to play super censor. Added to that, all heavyweights of the Tamil film industry have also backed Mersal to the hilt. In fact, Rajnikanth went to the extent of praising the film's subject. A sentiment that was echoed by Kamal Hassan. Even as a complaint has now been lodged against Vijay, from Tollywood bigwigs to people on the streets, support is only growing for him. Has the BJP's opposition to Mersal and their communal attack on its lead star backfired on the party? With Pramod Madhav in Chennai, Bureau Report, India Today. And we've got some breaking news coming in here on India Today. After the raids at his production office in Chennai, now actor Vishal has responded. He has said, and I quote, I don't have to worry about anything as I pay my taxes. I only said that it is not correct to watch a pirated movie. I didn't criticize the government. Remember, it was earlier reported that it was the GST intelligence squad that had raided his production office and residence. It was later clarified that it was not the GST intelligence, but uh, income tax officials were providing some kind of a clarification to the actor. Well, he's put out a statement now saying, I pay my taxes and have nothing to worry about, and that he had only criticized H. Raja of the BJP for inadvertently letting out that he had watched a pirated version of Mesa.